Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm actually going to be doing an Etsy shop critique. This is one of the many free critiques I do every single month for free to give back to my community. So if you would like a chance to win a critique, I will leave the link right below the video where you could sign up. Now, if this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, consider subscribing. I do upload weekly videos to help you build an impact for online business. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell. This is for everyone. So you'll be the first person notified of any new videos that I upload. In addition to that, if you're new to Etsy, you're a beginner, I have a lot of resources that you could find right below this video that will help you get started the right way. So make sure that you check them out. And let's head over to my computer to see who is today's lucky Etsy critique winner. All right, so today's lucky Etsy shop critique winner is the store called Eden Art Printables by Janelle. So congratulations, Janelle. Guys, even if you didn't win today's critique, make sure to stick around and watch this video all the way to the end because everything that I'm about to cover is applicable for any type of niche. And if you would like a chance to win a critique, make sure that you sign up by using the link. I will leave it right below the video in the text box description as well as in the comments area. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if it's your first time watching one of my critiques, what I normally do is that I'll take a particular listing and I do like an audit, a quick audit on that listing. So I'll talk about product photography. I talk about the title. I talk about the listing description. I talk about XE SEO. I talk about Google SEO, the curation of the store, and much more. I do break it down into sections so it's easy for everyone to kind of follow along and take notes as you go. So the listing that I'm doing and audit today is this one right here. So the first thing I wanna talk about is product photography. When you sell on an e-commerce platform, especially Etsy, which is very saturated when it comes to printables, you wanna make sure that your product stands out in the feed. You want people when they're browsing, prospective buyers when they're browsing the feed, to stop and take notice of your product. So make sure that whatever you're creating on Etsy, whatever products you're selling, whether it's printables or physical products, that you're creating products for your cater audience. You wanna make sure that your product is unique, is different, and it stands out from what everyone else sells on Etsy. Because if you're creating the same products like everyone else or very similar, ultimately you're just gonna blend in. You're just gonna be another Etsy seller trying to make it on Etsy. However, if you create unique products that stand out, then you will outperform your competition even if you are in a saturated niche. So the formula is to make sure that you have a unique product that no one else is selling that makes it a no-brainer for the person to say, you know what, I haven't seen a product like this in other stores. This is the best product I have come across of whatever they're looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and buy it from this particular store. So I think you did a really good job with your photo. It showcases exactly what you're selling. I'm not confused on what I'm buying. I'm buying a printable of some sort. I will say this, when you're thinking about printables, what makes your product different, Janelle, from everyone else that sells Christian or Bible burst printables? You really have to think about it in that way so you could create something that's very unique and different. Now, you did a really great job with your photos. There's not too many people that use all 10 photos and create a video, which is almost like a plus. She did such an extremely well job done. So she has all the different photos. I love her mock-ups. The aesthetic of her mock-ups are all the same, which is really nice. She has... This here that tells the person, hey, this is an instant download. This is what you will receive, and this is how it works. She has additional mock-ups of the product in different frame colors. And then on the bottom, she has how to download. So she has like a little mini guide on how to download it, whether you are a guest on a mobile or tablet. This goes a long way when you sell digital products because for many people, it's their first time buying digital products. They really don't know the process of downloading, how to even save it to their computer, how to print it, etc. So just having this here 
is actually great because you're informing that prospective buyer of how easy it is. And this could potentially make them say, oh, okay, it's that simple. Let me go ahead and proceed with the order. And then she has another mock-up over here. So she's done a really, really great job with her mock-ups, with the aesthetic of her mock-ups. Everything blends in together naturally, really beautiful. And what I also liked was her actual video. She has a video where she talks about instant download, high resolution files, print, frame, and enjoy. This is a quick video that she created. At the end, it ends with her actual logo. I love the video. I think it's such a creative way to create a video. A lot of times I get um, a lot of people ask me like, what type of videos should I do if I sell digital products? Well, this is a quick video that you could create using Canva or your favorite graphic design tool um, that anyone could create. And, you know, other ideas will be you could do a video of your reviews or you could do a video of that particular product with matching items as well if you want. Um, it really depends on what you sell. If you sell jewelry, you could do a video of the actual product and matching items. So maybe you have a necklace, but you have matching earrings, matching bracelet, matching watch, or matching rings. Maybe you could create a video where you showcase all of the different additional items that they could buy. And that could potentially help you get more up sales and more sales at the same time. So you just have to be creative. But she did a really, really great job with her mock-ups, giving enough information about what you're buying um, and being very detailed and everything goes with the same theme, which is really important as well. So this is really, really great. My only um, thing that I would recommend, Janelle, is maybe having a picture of you asking people to join your email list. I didn't see that in your actual store, but you know, having somewhere where the customer could go ahead and join your email list because not every single person that comes in contact with your store the first time are going to go ahead and buy from you. So having a way that you capture leads that you could remarket at a later time is crucial for the success of your business to get continuous sales on a regular basis to build out your email list and to have something that belongs to you especially if you ever get closed down for whatever reason, you don't have to start from zero. You have your email list and you could potentially just email them and say, hey, we are moving to Shopify or hey, we have opened our own site, you know, in our website, etc." So that would be my recommendation for you. Just having a picture where you offer some sort of incentive or just simply ask them to join your email list to stay updated with the latest products that you sell. And that's it. Something simple that either they're going to join or not join, but at least having it on every single listing will definitely help you. But really, really great job. Um, I know that you are a new store, but to be quite honest, it looks like you've been doing this for a long time. So maybe you already have experience in other stores. I'm not 100% sure, but you are off to a really great start. Now, let's go ahead and talk about your titles. Now for XESEO, you want to make sure that you're optimizing your title, that you're making them user friendly. So when the customer is reading it, it's easy for them to follow along, understand what exactly you're selling. But you also want to make sure that it's optimized for SEO. So you have to have find that balance of not making your title hard to read that it might turn off customers. I think you did a pretty decent job with yours. Um, it starts with the song, which is the, the song that you have here. Um, you did put printable digital download. So I'm assuming this is all one keyword here. Um, Christian wall art, Bible verse, Christian home decor, and praise the Lord print. Now, one thing that she did really, really great is amplifying her reach by using different terms. She didn't, she didn't repeat the same term over and over and over. So she didn't say Christian wall art, Bible wall art, um, Christian decor wall art. Like she didn't re keep repeating it. And that's really crucial because if you write it this way, you're amplifying your reach now and you're going to reach more potential buyers versus using the same word and being reductive with it. So she did a really great job with that. And I'm using E-Rank to do an, a quick audit on her listing. Now, guys, if my screen looks a little bit different to yours, it's because I do have E-Rank Pro. I do pay for the full version, so keep that in mind. Now, 
her main keyword that she's using is Psalms 150 um, printable digital download. So let's see if she's using that as her keywords. So she does have Psalm 150 and she doesn't have the printable digital download in here. I don't see it. And she does, let's see, Christian wall art is another keyword that she has. She does have that one. And then she has Bible burst print. And we could look at the title here. So I don't know why I keep going back and forth. Bible um, burst print. She does have it right here, as you can see. And then in her on her title, Christian home decor, praise the Lord. So she's actually doing a really great job with title and tag relevancy. It's so important. So many people miss that. They add whatever keywords they want under title, but they never match their tags. So she's actually doing a really great job. I think my only thing that I would recommend is making sure that if this is going to be your focus keyword for Google SEO, then what I would do is focus, uh, make sure that this keyword is a keyword that you're going to be, you want to rank for on Google. Maybe you did some keyword research and that's why you have it here. But make sure that in your meta description, which is your first 155 characters, you use that same keyword. That's a an SEO best practice for Google. So you want to make sure that whatever you put as your focus keyword is also in your meta description. And your meta description should be something short and sweet. So enticing, it should have a description of what you're selling. It should have your focus keyword follow with some sort of call to action. So um, click to shop now or grab yours today or click to learn more. Something that's going to entice someone when they find your listing on Google to head from Google over to your Etsy store. Guys, keep in mind that your listings are shown on both Etsy and Google. So you want to make sure that you are optimizing your listings for both platforms. So this is what people see on Etsy. They see your, your main image and then they see the beginning of your title. And then this is what people see on Google. They see the title, right, which is they pull it from your title listing. And then they see a short description of what you're selling. So you did a really good job. It says, get this beautiful Psalm 150 Christian Bible verse wall art. Print now the perfect way to combine beautiful artwork with the word of God. So I think it sounds really, really great. You have your call to action. You have your focus keyword. So you are doing such a terrific job. So your meta description is optimized really nice. If somebody was to find this on Google, they will be very enticed to click to learn more about the product that you're selling. So you did a really, really great job. And then when it comes to XESEO, you also have to consider your categories and your attributes. And by looking at them here, you have selected digital prints, which is what you sell. So you have chosen the right category. And for attributes, everything that you put in here um, looks pretty good, actually. So white, purple is the main colors that you have. It is on frame because it's a digital product. These are the different places you can use it. It's a minimalist look because it's very simple. Um, you do have religion as one of the categories and it's vertical. So you've done a really great job. You don't want to use attributes that don't accurately describe what you sell because the more people see your listings, the lower your conversion rate if you're not selling. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you choose the right categories, you choose the right attributes, and even the right tags as well. Because if you're using terms that are very generic, very broad, that doesn't accurately describe what you sell, the more people that see your listing and the less people that buy, it hurts your conversion rate, it hurts your listing quality score. And eventually, instead of you being on page one or page two, now you are buried in the search results and we don't want that. So make sure that you take your time when you're adding categories and attributes as well. And this is a set of keywords that you currently have. Um, for that particular listing. So one thing that I did notice with this a keyword set is that they don't have a lot of traction. A lot of these keywords like floral, Bible verse has less than 20 monthly search volume, let everything that has less than 20, um, minimalist Bible, praise the Lord. I don't know if these are supposed to be combined together. So if you're doing long tail keywords and you did the research, then you're fine. However, if they're not long tail keywords and these are just one, you know, one set of keywords, I would definitely 
work on doing keyword research and finding keywords that have a little bit more traction because these are not really driving you that much traffic. At least this one has 193 monthly search volume. But these that have less than 20, I would work on these first, trying to find keywords that have some type of traction. And what I normally like to suggest, and this works for majority of niches, is making sure that your average search volume is at least 500 or more and your competition is 30,000 or less. Usually those numbers really help you get traction, start driving traffic to your store. Um, obviously it's not just the average search or the competition, it's also based on making sure that the keyword accurately describes what you sell, so therefore you're showing your products to the people that are actually searching with an intent to buy. And once you have the new keywords, you would do the same thing that you did in your actual listing, Janelle. You will put title and tag relevancy and include your keywords there. You will make sure that your meta description has your focus keyword. And you also want to make sure that in your actual product description, you're adding your keywords for Google SEO. So therefore, you could boost your shop visibility. When people search for these terms on Google, Google will go ahead and show your listings to potential buyers. So that's one thing that I would recommend doing that I'm looking at your actual listing description. It's like the only one thing that you currently don't have. Um, you did a really great job of explaining the listing, what exactly you're getting, how to order, how to even download the files, what's included, all the different um, ratio sizes that you get included, how to print your files, um, disclaimer, and then at the end, you signed it off with your name. I think the only suggestion I have here besides adding your email list once you start it is making sure that at the bottom you have a backlink to your homepage or a link to other matching items. Um, the reason why is because we wanna keep that customer engaged in your shop. You don't want them to go like this and now they look at your competitors, right? Because one of the disadvantages of selling on Etsy is that Etsy does put the competitor listings right down here. So we wanna keep them a little bit longer in our store. So one trick that you could do is adding links right here to your homepage maybe adding a link to similar products. You don't have to add more than two, to be quite honest. Two is sufficient, but having some sort of link down here that they could click on and stay in your actual store. So let's go back to your main store. So here we are. I like the banners that you have. One thing that I will say is that I do see a lot of people when they open a new shop, they offer a discount right away. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't want to condition people to get a discount all the time when they shop from your store. And if you are going to offer a discount, what I always tell people is try to get an email list, right? An email, excuse me, for the exchange of the discount. So create an email list where you say, hey, join my email list and a, as a grand opening gesture, I'm offering 20% off. That way, now you have their email list and now you could remarket to them at a later time versus you just putting the code for everyone to grab and they don't have the email list. Now, I will say this. I just noticed this while I was talking. You have it here. Join the email list for 10% welcome discount. Now, when we close this, no one's seeing this. You see how no one sees it there? And for a lot of people, for some reason, they won't see this here, here either. So what I suggest is one, pushing this up. So pushing the join the email list up here. So when people are browsing your store, they don't overlook that. Or you could put something as simple as open to read more. I have that in my actual stores. So I have a, like a little parenthesis where I put parenthesis, open to read more parenthesis, and I have like a little arrow pointing down. Why? Because there's a lot of people that don't see that here. So you want to definitely do that because... This is what people see by default, and they're going to be like, where's the discount? Just like how I missed it the first time. But congratulations, good for you, Janelle, that you have an email list where they could go to to get that, that discount um, that you're offering. Now, here it says join the email list for 10% welcome discount, um, and you can say you can now enjoy the store-wide. Okay, so these are automatically put on the 20% off. What I would have done is a little bit different. I would say grab the 
20% off by joining the email list. And then once they join the email list, you send them the coupon code. That will work a little bit better because you're grabbing their email. If they know that the 20% of is automatically here, they might not join your email list at all. So that would be my only tip for you. Um, great job for having a beautiful banner. Great job for having a really great name actually for your store. Great job for your logo. Your logo looks really cute and professional. Great job for having a beautiful picture of yourself with a beautiful smile. I think it's so inviting when people come to your store. And you know, you, you've done updates right here, which is really important. You have your about me section filled out. You have your one account of Pinterest here. Um, I do want to make sure that you guys know that in this area, you could actually put any clickable link to any site. So if you want to put your email list here, if you want to put your website, if you want to put your Instagram account, whatever you put here is clickable. People are able to click and head over to that page. It's the only area that XE allows you to add a clickable link. So take advantage of it and make sure that you fill this out if you have additional social media platforms. But honestly, I think she's doing a terrific job. If you guys have any feedback for Janelle, maybe anything I didn't mention, leave it below. But I think overall, she's doing an extremely great job. Um, there's not that much that I would change. I think the only thing I would change would be the, the way that you provide a discount. That way you could start growing your email list on autopilot and a lot quicker. But other than that, you are off to a really great star. You have done a really great job. So you should be very proud of yourself, Janelle. Um, let her know if she has, um, if you have any feedback for Janelle, let her know by leaving the comments below. Um, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And thank you everyone for watching.